leadership of the township committee. Uh, so in this case, there will be there, there needs to be three votes cast in favor of the ordinance in order for it to pass, a majority of the entire membership of the township committee, which is five. The second thing is that the statute provides that the governing body must adopt a simultaneous resolution explaining the basis for the governing body, in this case the township committee's, adoption of an ordinance that is inconsistent with the master plan because in general, your land use ordinances are intended and should be intended to implement the master plan, not be inconsistent with it. Nevertheless, there are occasions when uh, an ordinance will be considered and or adopted that is inconsistent, and the law requires that you set forth in a simultaneous resolution your reasoning for doing that. There's no other standards that are set forth in the law. It doesn't set a bar as to what you have to set forth uh, what you have to find. It's simply setting forth your reasons for deviating from the master plan. So there is, uh, as you pointed out, uh, the Township Committee's consideration of Resolution 19-222, uh, which is set, does set forth a variety of reasons if the Township Committee decides to move forward and adopt Ordinance 2542-19. Thank you, Mr. Duzak. I declare the hearing open. Anyone desiring to make a statement or offer commentary concerning this ordinance will please come forward to the podium and identify yourself. As is our normal procedure in the light of the number of people who may wish to be heard in connection with this ordinance, each person will be asked to speak once, will be limited to three minutes to offer comments. A beep will sound at two and a half minutes to alert the person that their speaking will conclude shortly. And this will give a chance for everyone to be heard. Questions posed by persons speaking during the course of the hearing will be responded to as may be appropriate in the light of pending litigation by counsel or the township of planet or township planner at the end of the hearing, that is after everyone's comments have been heard. At the conclusion of the public hearing, any member of the township <coughs> committee desiring to make a statement concerning the ordinance will have their opportunity to do so. The hearing is now open. Those who wish to speak may come to the podium and identify themselves. Nobody wishes to speak? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm Dmitry Shelhoff, 262 Brookhaven Way, Short Hills. So I guess my first question, Mr. Buzak here um, laid down the law. My first question is whom does he represent? I'm sorry, I can't understand you. Can you speak Mr. to Mr. Buzak here. You will be re 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 questioning okay. me. They will be taking notes and answering at the end. Well, I'm asking on you. Whom does okay. he represent? Okay, first of all, I'm very sorry. Did you state your name and address? I did. Okay. I'm sorry. I really, I apologize <coughs> for understanding you. Can you repeat? The clock? the clock is going. Please give me your question. The question is, whom does Mr. Buzak represent? The, the township. The township. Okay. So... From the township website, I printed out this legal background. Who did prepare that legal background? Please give all your comments. Everything will be answered at the end of everybody's comments. Well, okay, then my only comment is that I object to this ordinance. Thank you. Next. Madam Mayor, my name is Dr. Richard Riva. I've lived in this town since 1961. Is the Probably clock going? longer. I can't see it. It started at 2:30 instead of 3. Okay. Ed, can you um Thank you. Sir, Thank can you. we explain the clock? It starts at 2:30. It will then be you will then have 30 seconds to conclude your comments. Okay, we can start afresh. Mr. Thompson. You get 3 minutes total. Starting now, 2.30. Madam Mayor, my name is Dr. Richard Riva. I've lived in this town since 1961, probably longer than the majority of the people in this room. I have educated my children in this township 
and stayed in this township after they graduated. I have served my town. I am a past president of the Board of Health. I was a town Santa Claus for nine years. <laughs> I've also been past president of the Milburn Short Hills Republican Club. Therefore, I can state that I have a historical perspective of the persona of our township. We have a target on our back because of the commissions and omissions of private administrations. Political payback and catch up can be rough. I would recommend that the township committee table this resolution discussion because of several unanswered questions which are probably not in the best interest of the people of this township. Number one, are there conflicts of interest and affiliations of the township committee? Last Tuesday at the library, it was glib and disingenuous for me to hear that there was no conflict and I looked into it. There was no further discussion. Under the, Fr under the Freedom of Information Act, the people of this township have the right to be fully informed. All members of the township committee should be willing to stand and state and affirm that they have no conflict of interest or affiliations prior or presently with Mr. Silverman and his pyramid of business entities. Not to do so suggests Tammany Hall and bullying politics. I'll skip sewage. Parking. As previously stated, all parking was to be within the building complex underground. There's been no intuitive discussion regarding where commercial vehicles will park along Chatham Road or Woodland Road, where presently a UPS truck and a car can't pass at the same time. Where were the township garbage trucks supposed to go? Where were the guests of this, the tenants of that building park? This area cannot support this increased traffic volume. My last point, because of time, is the environmental impact of the township Texaco property. I have seen no New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection statement of that. I think we, there should be a report that is reasonable, and there should, be, there should be public disclosures of prior testings of this site. The Glenwood area is environmentally sensitive as there is a small rivulet that runs between the Arboretum and the planned site. A contaminated runoff is not acceptable. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Hi, I'm Richard Prince, and yeah, my wife and I have lived in town for 25 years. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my first town hall meeting in 25 years, so I've been delinquent, but I learned from my friends, but I'm glad I'm here tonight. First of all, thank you for the committee for your service to the town. This should be civil, even though uh, many of us are troubled by the project. I guess this is a non-rehearsed speech, but sometimes those are the best. Um, the first thing I would um, put down for the record is it would be good for the committee, I think it would be valuable for, for the town to know that, to echo the last speaker, there's no conflicts of interest in any regard for any step of this process. I, I assume that's the case, but it should be uh, clear. Second, uh, there should be some kind of certification that from a urban planning perspective, of which I'm not an expert, every single box check that needs to get done was in fact done, whatever that means. And in fact, if every step was done, was it done for the full, per the full spirit and intent of whatever that checklist should be, including things like safety evaluation, which I understand perhaps incorrectly was done in July when no one is in town or in my area. Most of us are on vacation, kids are not in school, so that if in fact a safety a study was done, what's the effective meaning of it? The environmental <laughs> impact study, was that done? Did the Arboretum register any concerns? Were they involved? I'm told they're not. That sounds a little suspicious. And maybe my last comment for you, if you haven't thought about it already, is does the 85 Woodland Road area that is to be developed or redeveloped, notwithstanding the sins in o of omission and commission in the past regarding the uh, Mount Laurel decision of 1985, do you guys really think that that property represents the best location in Milburn Short Hills for a four-story building? Thank you. Thank you. Good 
evening. Good evening. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm sure you've had better days. My name is Nancy Mayer, 84 Woodland Road. Um, I'm kind of interested because if I read correctly, there's 50 spots allocated for the medical facility. I would like to point out that I went over and actually counted the spots that are currently there. They far exceed 50, and there is already an issue with parking for the patients on Long Woodland Road and Chatham Road. And I think that that's something that's important for everyone to understand and recognize. It also boggles my mind, and I apologize if this was done and not presented, but it is hard to believe that in this day and age, an environmental study was not done and shared. And it is hard to believe that those are the values we are passing on. Thank you. Good night. Uh, my name is Ying Hong, 93 Oakview Terrence. I understand our town has concerns about lack of low income housing and eager to fill the deficit. However, if we reduce the deficit by sacrificing the safety of this community, the environment, and the kids, especially those little kids in Glenwood Elementary School, point to miles away, I would not agree with you. If the nearby school is a high school, that might be another story. But we are talking about an elementary school, K to four, with their little siblings, maybe two, three years old. They walk to school every day and have to pass that crossroad. I think you will agree with me how difficult it is to control kids in that age. With the increase of uh, density in the new construction, the traffic will increase, and the risk of these little pedestrians will increase significantly. Uh, I'm a mom of two elementary kids at Glenwood, and I'm also a professor of statistics at Rutgers. So let me try to show you some evidence. Based on the statistics in NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the accident rate in Access County is 0.005%. If we increase a car, the car number of cars from 100 to 140, with those 40 cars maybe coming from the new residence, the accident rate will increase 40%. If increase from 20 to 200, 200 to 240, the rate increased 20%. That's shocking to me. I sincerely hope I can convince you how important your decision tonight will be. I sincerely hope you can take, you can think about those lovely faces from Glenwood Elementary School when you, when you make your decision. Those are kids that needs your protection. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, Steve Toger, 15 Ferncliff Terrace. So I'd like to put a few more numbers around the picture to help people understand. I'm not a statistician, but I'll give it a try. Can you tell us how delinquent in number of units we are in affordable housing in Milburn Short Hills? We do not have our official number from the okay. Fair Share Housing Court. Is it more than 500? Is it close to 1,000? It is. We wish we knew. It is. It's easily over 500, maybe 1,000. This project is supposed to bring 16 units. So clearly, 12, sorry, I overstated. 12 units, right? People want to know, people want to know why when we, when we started this negotiation, it was 62 units, and a year later, it's still 62 units. It's because we're being held over a barrel by this developer because of this issue. Now, there's got to be a better solution for this town to address an issue where it's 500 to 1,000 delinquencies in affordable housing by bringing in this small number of units that's going to cost this uh, Glenwood neighborhood such a high price. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Sam Reckford, 28 Ridge Terrace. Down the street. Uh, I want to follow up on that point because maybe I just don't understand something, but if we need more affordable housing units, why are we allowing all of these non-affordable housing units to be built here and destroy our neighborhood? Why not make a rule that every unit in advance of what they can build as of right has to be affordable housing and then see how many they want to build? It seems like they're just using this as a wedge to build lots of non-affordable units 
that are going to be right of just be destroying our neighborhood. This just isn't right. Thank you. Since we seem to be, Mark Stahl from uh, 66 Windermere, since we seem to be talking about the uh, amounts of units, um, I'm aware that the across the street there's an apartment complex that I believe is 14 units per acre. So if you start thinking of this unit I, at 60 units in an acre and a half, that's about 40 to 41 units per acre, so somewhere near 185%. I did the math beforehand, so hopefully my numbers are good. Um, so we're about 185% of our zoning. If you use that as a comparison, I understand this isn't actually zoned that way. So it seems to me that this is a, an attempt to really push out from what our master plan sort of suggests. Um, I think that if we were to say that, I think the, the, the issue to me is are we making a fair effort? Are we making a, are doing our fair share to try to provide fair housing? As the pr previous person suggests, if we allow the housing to go over zoning, if we figure zoning using net 14 as a baseline, just as an estimate, we allow housing to go up to say 20, per, you know, 20 units per acre, which is a little less than half than what they're asking, then we would be providing them not only with say that 20% fair housing, but we'd also be giving the developer a little bit of incentive to build in, in market housing and still arriving at something much closer to our actual zone level. Um, I guess the idea is, can we come up with proposals or do, is there ways to approach this that allow us to meet the obligations that to, or to show that we are making a good faith effort to meet our housing obligations while not abandoning our master plan and allowing us to protect the residential nature of the neighborhood and the environmental nature of the area around it. So, thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Agnes Sim. I'm at 444 Old Short Hills Road. I want to echo what everyone said before, but really on the numbers. Um, I did review your statement, so thank you for that. And the understanding I got was on the fundamentals, and I'm asking this committee to review the fundamentals once more, given everyone's sentiments here. But it seems like um, the builder's remedy and you know the opportunity to change the zoning ordinances is to allow the inclusion of these affordable units. So if you take the 12 out of the 62, that leaves 50. And to Mark's point, I don't know that anyone would ever agree to 50 units but for this builder's remedy. The number just seems egregiously high. And I'm hearing that Judge Gardner is a very fair judge. And knowing the proximity of the elementary school, knowing that we had a pedestrian fatality at that corner not too long ago, knowing that we have the apartment complex just across the street at 14 per acre, right, zoning. Um, and as everyone has stated before, it does not fit within the character of that neighborhood. So I ask that at minimum you consider getting at least a second legal opinion, if you haven't already. Um, just to throw one name out there, there's attorney Jeff Serenian who represents municipalities and he's tried the Mercer case that we've heard before. Um, and I would like to hear about, um, I think at one point before the mediation started, there were 55 units that were on the table versus the 62, so I'm not sure how we got from 55 to 62, so if you can address that, I would appreciate that. Um, but also on the process, um, I would love to see more opportunity for folks to come out and provide their comments um, and maybe come up with other alternatives that people can brainstorm. The Q&A last week I did see on the website, so it was helpful to have a taping, but that was on the night when the elementary schools had back to school night. And especially when you've got Glenwood impacted in such a significant way, having the Q&A session when Glenwood parents were going to be at the school versus the library um, is a huge opportunity, I think, that was missed to get everyone's opinions. Um, and similarly tonight, we've got the middle school back to school night. So of course, there are a ton of parents there that I'm sure would have liked to have been here as well. Um, and lastly, while I know this specific piece is for the next meeting um, on October 2nd, I would like to um, better understand in light of the concern about this particular project, why the committee is considering a zoning or change to our zoning requirements to allow higher buildings. So moving from 28 foot maximum with two stories to 40 foot maximum with three stories. I would love to hear more about that or maybe we'll hear about it at the next meeting. I'll be hearing the next. Thank, Thank you, you for talking. <laughs> Hi, 
Thank you. Uh, my name is Larry Nesser, 79 Stony Lane in Short Hills. And I had three minutes prepared, and I was going to use the, all three minutes around appropriateness and scale and density and safety and all the other issues that, that my fellow town members have, um, have articulated prior to me coming up, and I thought they did a great job. So rather than do that, I think what I have two questions. I have one question, which is how the settlement became so misaligned with a high quality suburb and what a high quality suburb should be. So that's a question in general. And then my ask of the committee would be the same exact thing I tell my kids, right? Which is, does it smell right? And if it doesn't, take a step back and take your time and make sure you get it right because this is permanent. So there's nothing wrong with taking a step back, rethinking it. Maybe that means renegotiating the settlement. I don't know if I'm using the words properly, but renegotiating what we're about to do and just take your time and make sure it smells right. So thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Richard Wasserman, 24 Inverness Court. And um, I also uh, stand before you as a resident of the neighborhood. Uh, my kids went to school at the Glenwood School. Um, I love the town, and I also have specific concerns about the, the overall size of what's going in. And I know the town is in a tight spot. There's no easy answers here. I know we have to do our affordable housing, and, um, and I know we have limited choices. But I would say at this point that there may be an opportunity to take a pause to bring in an outside counsel to take a second look at what we're doing before we sign off on this. I know it's, uh, there's a lot of tension in the room in terms of... Um, in Mr. Terms Wasserman, please speak to me. Yeah. I know there's a lot of tension in the room over, uh, you know, over, over this issue, but it is affecting people um, and everybody has kids that go to the Glenwood School, or many of us do. My kids went there. And I also, ha I also share many of the environmental concerns. Um, I know that um, you know, this is going to affect the Arboretum. I'm concerned that the Arboretum did not, you know, did not come forward to make a statement. I kind of feel that the Arboretum should have been at the forefront of this fight. And I'm disappointed that they chose to stand down. Um, also, I'm also concerned about environmentally in terms of uh, the possible contamination from the gas station. And I'm not satisfied that if you bring in 100 or 150 new people that are going to live there, that that will be a safe environment you know, or safe drinking water. I know that I've heard many, of, uh, many stories of people that have come down with cancer in the area. And I know, I, I know there may not be a correlation to it, but I'm very concerned environmentally from any possible pollution that may not be able to be remediated. So with that, those are just some of my concerns. Thank you. Shri Singhvi, 50 Montview Avenue, Short Hills. Uh, and your name, please? Shri, S-H-R-I. Thank you. Uh, so a couple of things. Obviously, a lot of people have made their point about uh, this particular project. But the other concerns many of us have is if, as a town and, and the committee, uh, if we do not do the full due diligence on how this goes along, this will open a floodgates for a number of other such projects. And so this is not going to be the first one. Uh, the second question I would like to understand on the, on the last line of this uh, memo that in such a trial, the developer will not be limited to seeking the number of units on which he's willing to settle is 62. So we would like to understand what's the maximum they could go. Because if, if here, you know, losing is 82 and, and winning is zero, I don't know why settling on 62 is a victory for the town.
Hi, my name is Joanne Hughes, and I live on Ferncliff Terrace, and my husband and I have been in town for over 40 years. Um, my concern is, can the Glenwood School handle all the new children that are going to be coming in? And secondly, I am very concerned about safety. Anyone knows if you're driving down when the train comes in, people are in the streets. They're, they're driving. You can't drive and be safe. It's, it's frightening. And as someone did mention, we did have a fatality there already. So I'm really concerned about safety, not just for children, but for everyone trying to get to that train. Thank, Thank you. you. Ted Kuntz at 108 Forest Drive. We've been in town for probably 35 years as well. Children went to Glenwood. So we're very concerned about what's happening. And what uh, my point is, we would like to know what the planning committee is really doing to fight for us. There's, as you can see, most of this town is probably against this project, against the density of the project. Not the fact that it's low income, it's, it's the size, it's the density of it. Why can't we cut down the density? And we would like to hear from the Planning Commission, are you guys really fighting for us? And what, what are you doing to either postpone this thing? I know we probably can't change it. You presented the other day, the lawyer was, uh, heard you the other day saying it's almost a fait accompli. Well, you can appeal this, you can fight this. And you, there's a risk in fighting it. But we would like to hear from you guys, you know, how are you fighting for us? And that's really what my, my question would be, and I'd love to hear that. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Hao Jing from 258 Brook Hemingway. Uh, I, I, we, we just uh, moved into uh, this neighborhood for less than one year, and uh, so I'm relatively new. I'm not. You might want to speak a little louder for the whole okay. audience, if you could. Uh, basically, uh, we just moved in for less than one year, so I cannot brag about how many years I've been here and how familiar with this area. Uh, so I just want to tell a bit about myself and my family. Uh, we got a ho the house like uh, September 20th last year, and uh, and in November uh, we have a baby uh, who is now 10 months old, and we uh, love him so much that we move here. That's the main reason, yeah. And uh, then uh, a few months later, um, an old lady was hit and died at the cross of Chetan and uh, Woodland, so that worries me a lot. And now we are, you know, um, for the. I haven't read through all the details in all the all the plan, but uh, uh, like the 60, 62 units uh, does worry water me a lot, uh, you know, combined with the medical center. And uh, so I, that's the thing I would, would really appreciate if you can do uh, a bit more uh, than what we have uh, at hand right now. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Manendra Kumar, One Clive Hills Road. Um, my points are very similar to what the other people have already talked. Uh, why it has been arranged on a back to school night? That's my first question. Uh, why there are only 12 out of 50 affordable housing? If the whole purpose is to get more housing? And the other questions like, well, the traffic studies, where is that? Uh, what's, the, what's the report of that? What's the environmental studies? What's the report of that? What's the impact of that? And, and uh, the other concern, like similar to the person before me, I actually moved to the town just one month back. I have a two-year-old and a six-year-old. We moved here because of the good school district. Mo we moved here because of the good town. We are ready to pay such high taxes, not because we can come and see our schools getting crowded and, and the unprovoked uh, development going on everywhere, right? One of the persons said that this is not the first one. And I totally agree. If we let it happen, then there will be a second one, there will be a third one, and it will keep going on. So my question again to back to you guys is how we are fighting against it. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is David Kerr. I live on uh, Nine Windermere. 
I didn't really decide to ask anything about one second ago, so I thought I would, would ask. Um, obviously, there's a lot of feelings about the project. Can you talk a little more about the back end? If the township committee did decide at this point in time to uh, not approve the settlement, what are the immediate next steps? And also, are there any uh, case law or other results in other jurisdictions where remedy lawsuits have been rejected? You know, what is the potential downside? I know this was touched a little at the last meeting on last Tuesday, but maybe you can talk a little more about that. You know, specific other cases and what was the, uh, you know, the fallout, what happened? Certainly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Next, please. Are we done? Oh. You knew you weren't getting off that easy. <laughs> Dave Cosgrove, 99 Oakview. There's been a couple of questions about, uh, including the gentleman who just spoke, about the downside of telling this developer to get lost. Um, and if, if council is going to address that, I'd like someone to address the Cranford case, Cranford versus Township of Cranford, because there it was a builder's remedy case. It got tried. The judge lowered the number that the developer was asking for, and the, the density was 22.3 units per acre versus about 58 that are um, being given here. Oh, I'm Thank over you. here. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. My name is Gary Butter, 55 Baldersroll Way. Uh, by my calculations, which could be off, I've been living here for 28 years. Um, I must admit, uh, and I apologize for not being as up on all this as a lot of my uh, brothers and sisters in the room are. Uh, but it sounds to me, uh, you know, I'm curious about what concessions were given up by the um, builder, it seems to me, when I went to a meeting, which I think was about a year ago, um, the complaints were the fact that it was uh, four stories high, and I thought uh, one woman was very effective in showing a balloon and how high that looks from across the way. Um, that, uh, from what I hear today, it was 55 units at that point, and now it's 62. Uh, and so I'm kind of wondering, it seems like we're negotiating in the, going in the wrong direction and is there anything other than just the the threat of the builders remedy that is forcing us to to settle um, I'd also would love to hear from everybody in the room who is in favor of this uh, I don't want to think that that uh, you know um, they are in here silently uh, and and I also like to say one other thing about you know, I have no real concept of how bad this can go um, if, uh, if we don't settle. But I will tell you uh, that over 25 years ago, the Sachs property was bought by Stop and Shop. And, uh, and I know that because it was, it, it was purchased before my daughter was born, and she is now over 25 years old. And there were a lot of ups and downs, including losing at the New, York, New Jersey state supreme court and yet they sold it and so uh, there is something to be said that you know uh, in some instances justice delayed is justice granted thank you Sandy Kimmel, Seven Briarwood Drive. If I'm not mistaken, this is the third um, builder's remedy lawsuit that the township has faced. There's the one on South Orange Avenue, the Kennedy Parkway property, and now this. And my fear is maybe we have to concede this one because of the way it played out, but there are multiple properties coming available for development, and what's going to prevent a 10-story monstrosity from going in downtown. I think the, the board has a challenge for the future that has to find a way to temper the desires of real estate developers to insert themselves and change our community in an adverse way. Thank you. Hi. 
Hi, my name is Belinda Lu. I live at uh, 40 Briarwood Drive, uh, Harshan School area. I have been living in town for more uh, about 10 years. Dear Township Committee members, I wish you to vote no on the, silver, uh, on the settlement with the Silverman Group, postpone the voting date, <coughs> and asking for an extension on the immunity period. It is obligatory for you to clarify your positions on a few fundamental and important questions from the concerned residents. The meeting house, uh, house price and the meeting income in Melbourne are believed to have a gap from those of affordable housing market. To find out the number of units of affordable housing we owe and the efficient ways to deliver those units without causing a decrease in existing house price and other problems is a challenging task. It requires time and resources of different collaborative groups. The one foot setback and the high density of 40 units per acre presented in the Silverman's design is unheard of in the construction code of small suburban towns. We request that they conduct a research on the environmental impact and justify their design which will be good for the public. The Silverman Group has rights to make profits, but they do not have rights to create a social hostility. They need to behave as rational citizens and goodwill community members. <laughs> the Fair House Act in New Jersey State is believed to advocate affordable houses, not intended to destroy Melbourne housing market. Not only is that our most valuable asset, but also our very homes. Please postpone the settlement vote, asking for an extension. We need time to work this important issue out with each other. Thank you. Very much. Hi there. Good evening. Uh, good evening. Uh, Anand Bhandari, 1 Exeter Street. Speak up, please. Sorry. Anand Bhandari, 1 Exeter Street. So just a little nervous. <laughs> so I wanted to make a few points. Uh, I think some of these are made. Uh, some of them are new. So one request I have to the township is uh, this hearing has been conducted <coughs> on a back to school night. And a lot of people I know who wanted to come, they could not come because they wanted to mm -hmm go back to school, I would appreciate if there could be another public hearing. Uh, the next question I have is, uh, I understand like out of 62 uh, units which are being made, like there are only 12 which are affordable, uh, which is such a tiny percentage. So I think it would help if numbers around like how many affordable houses we have in the township, what is the percentage which we're trying to meet, what are the different ways in which we can actually meet those numbers if there are any studies which have been done and if they could be made public. Uh, traffic studies, like a lot of people have actually spoken about <laughs> traffic studies. Have we actually done an impact of uh, having X number of additional people, what is it gonna do to the traffic patterns? Uh, very important and a, con a little concerning. Uh, and I understand like three days back, uh, Silverman actually filed a lawsuit, uh, was it three days back? Uh, they, they filed this builder's remedy lawsuit uh, when the township was about to, uh, 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 like, I, I think it's one thing which is important which should be made clear, like there are absolutely no conflict of interest, um, you know. So it would really help if everybody could say like under oath that there are no conflict of interest. Uh, environmental study, uh, very important. And uh, one more thing, actually one last thing, is a study of impact. So I understand that uh, we created the Washington School because we ran out of uh, classroom space, right? Now that we have additional people who are coming in, 
um, what is the impact on the space we have in school? Will we have to create a new school? If you have to create a new school, who's going to pay for it? Are our taxes going to go up because we have to like pay for a new school? Has that study been done? If it's been done, if it could be made public, I think it will really help. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Mark Zingali, 36 Elmwood Place. I don't want to repeat the many excellent points that have been made this evening. Just want to put a fine point on a couple of numbers I heard, um, notwithstanding the excellent statistics that we heard earlier. Um, there are about 43 units per acre proposed with, of the 62 on an acre and a half. Plus, there's also the Summit Medical Group office, about 10,000 square feet. So the density is actually, you know, that's going to increase the density, whether it's cars, people, traffic, and so forth. Um, so I think I heard across the street that the density is at about 14 um, units per acre. So we are talking about more than double that, plus the Summit Medical Group. Um, also, uh, we mentioned, somebody mentioned the town of Cranford. That um, finding of the by the judge in the appellate court uh, found 23 apartments per acre was sufficient. That's about 92.5%, uh, or actually this proposal is about 92.5% higher than that, that um, decision. Um, one other thing I did not hear um, is that the former Sachs building is going to be developed into 270 apartments, I believe. Um, so that could be, who knows, 500 people. Um, and they are going to be, many of them, uh, you got to assume, will want to take the train at Short Hills, which is a 10 minute walk away or a five minute drive. And many of them will be dropped off. We know that, it's common sense. I don't think that was considered. Um, finally, I just want to echo the point about the process, uh, greater openness, greater consideration. Um, I think it's very, very clear to all of us here that this, this number, 62, coming from 82, just seems like the 82 was anchored first. And you bring it down a little bit, and you only get 12 affordable apartments, housing apartments. So it just doesn't seem right. And finally, uh, I know somebody else said this, but I, I just want you all to think about the fact very carefully that you're here to represent the entire town, all of us, and that's true whether you in particular live in that particular neighborhood or not. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Hi. My name is Joe Esposito. I live on Meadowbrook Road in Short Hills. Um, I was born and raised in this town. I moved back about five years ago uh, for the schools and for the love of this town. Um, I'm very dedicated to this town. Um, I'm also a member of the Pedestrian Safety Advisory Board. Um, it does trouble me, the impact of cars and pedestrians, and that there was a fatality right at that corner. Um, I just wanted to share something from the founder of Short Hills Neighborhood, which was Stuart Hartshorn, a quote that he had. Um, when he built the, the neighborhood in the 1870s, he said he wanted to create a harmoni harmonious community for people who appreciated nature, where natural beauty would not be destroyed by real estate developments and where people of congenial taste could dwell together. So what did he do? He gifted a portion of that land to his daughter, Cora Hartshorn. And that's where we have the Arboretum. And so tonight, for me, I, I want to bring a voice. I know there's a lot of numbers of units, but I want to bring a voice to the 45 different species of trees, the 150 species of wildlife that are there, and the over 100 species of birds. It's a bird sanctuary. There's three main birds that I'd like to see a study. There's the barred owl that's threatened in New Jersey. 
there's the Pereg peregrine falcon, which is endangered in New Jersey. And there's also the red-shouldered hawk, which is endangered in New Jersey and threatened federally. Um, not only does that bring pressure to the wildlife, there is noise pollution, there is light pollution, there is hazardous waste in the creek behind there. Um, currently, <clears throat> the office is closed at night, I mean, and on the weekends. You know, it's a very different when we have a four story and there's lights on and there's a traffic and there's cars and there's antifreeze and oil on the ground. Um, just wanted to bring that voice of the wildlife and to ask that more studies be, be Thank made. You. In effect. Thank you. Good evening. Hi. Thank, thank you for inviting us. I'm Bill Horvat. I live at 40 Whitney Road, which is not in the Glenwood section. But I was listening to some of the numbers that were uh, communicated. I think somebody said that we could have a, an affordable housing objective of what, a thousand, possibly a thousand units. And I wonder how many units of housing do we have in the town? 5,000. And if we have to accept proposals like this, we are getting five units uh, for every affordable housing unit, that would say we'd have to add 5,000 units. That seems pretty incredible. I mean, I mean, just from that perspective, I think it's really worth our effort to challenge this, to not accept the arbitrator, and to really consider that issue. If you have to accept this kind of a ratio, what are you really accepting? Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Andrew Finkelstein. I live on uh, Taylor Road. Been a resident for uh, over 10 years now. Um, wasn't planning on speaking tonight, um, and it kind of only this whole thing only came to me over the last you know couple weeks. Um, saw you in town, and um, uh, I did a little research myself on this to try and get up to speed on this, and I think I understand the, the process a little better now. Um, and unfortunately, even all the legitimately strong and good complaints and issues pointed out by the town that we've heard that the judge won't take these into consideration and that stinks for us and that that's that's unfortunate but I've also spoken to lawyers who said they will look at suitability and I can't imagine that a judge is going to say that something this size or bigger is suitable for this plot that's wooded with an arboretum and base and low density all around it so to the extent that other people have come up here and said it doesn't seem like we have much to lose and as part of my job, I handicap lawsuits all the time. And when I have nothing to lose on the downside, I say go to court because there's nothing to lose. <laughs> um, I, I've also spoken to some builders who are friends in New Jersey, and they do this process for a living. And we are, from what he tells me, he lives in town, we are being played just the way the builders like it. Um, <laughs> They make an absurd ask, 82 units. They ask for something to the moon, shameless, and the town settle for something that they think seems reasonable off that point, but it's also still ridiculous, which I think our planner also mentioned we would never approve something like this otherwise. So we should not play in their hands. I think we should take our chance, chances in the lawsuit, but I'm not a lawyer, but I think we need a second opinion. I do respect the work our advisors have done, I know their work is very strong. I respect the work of the committee. I know a lot went into this settlement. I know we're very far down the road, but I just think we should get a second opinion. There are lawyers that specialize in municipality-only cases. 
if they also say we should settle, I'm willing to say so be it, we're stuck. But I think we need another opinion, and I think the other opinion will say not to take this deal. Thanks. Excuse me. Uh, good evening. BB Shear, 101 Oakview Terrace. Um, in terms of the completely defeatist attitude that the judge, we're, we're told that the judge would never uh, lower this, this number of uh, 62 units plus the Summit Medical Group. I, I, I'm, I haven't really heard anything that convinces me that that's so. Other towns do better. Um, I believe that there's a good chance we could do better too. The special master, before we got into this, the special master was presented as a terrible boogeyman that was going to come in and take over our whole town and tell us how to do everything. Turns out Mr. Banish is satisfied with 12 units. He's not going to, uh, he, he can recommend 12 units, which w and, and um, he's not going to necessarily ask that, he, he's not going to demand that we build a bigger uh, structure there to get more than 12 units. Uh, in addition, it was a bit uh, discouraging that the Summit Medical Group, the proceeds to Silverman from the Summit Medical Group are not being considered here at all. I think that's a good issue. Um, we were told, oh, they never consider that. Well, let's try to make them consider that. The Summit Medical Group is not housing. Um, why are we, we don't need to have the Summit Medical Group there. Uh, so I, I think there are, th there's room here to do better than we're doing. And I am going to ask each of you who's going to vote to do the right thing for this town and, and reject the settlement. faked us out. Um, Deborah Nevis, 65 Knollwood Road. Um, I have a question that perhaps Mr. Phillips can answer towards the end of this hearing. Um, there's a section in the area of setback requirements that says that along Chatham Road, the minimum setback shall be seven feet except for a permitted area of encroachment of up to 125 feet in length as measured parallel to Chatham Road from the westernmost property line. Within this area of encroachment, the building may be set back two feet from the property line. Um, this is repeated again uh, along Woodland Road, <clears throat> another permitted area of, of encroachment, and um, also along the shared property line with Lot 76 and Block 1904, which I believe is along the Arboretum on the western portion of the um, property. The minimum setback shall be one foot <clears throat> um, what I'm wondering is, what is a permitted area of, of encroachment? Um, so if that could be explained, I would appreciate that on what will be encroached. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is, I was at the mall yesterday, and I um, saw Matt Cali um, in all its enormity, and realized that what's going in at Woodland is not that far off from what's going up at Matt Cali, except that instead of being along JFK Parkway, this is going up on Little Chatham Road and on Little Woodland Road. <clears throat> the only difference with Matt Cali that I could see other than um, a story or two is that there's actually a significant setback for the Matt Cali site, which according to this um, ordinance is not in existence for Chatham Road. Um, currently, the, the um, setback requirements are, I believe, 10 feet, but if a building goes above 32 feet, then currently under the ordinance, um, it, the setback has to be a foot per, um, per foot going up in height. <clears throat> so right now, the buildings on, chat, well, on Woodland um, are set back almost 25 feet, and we're now talking about setbacks of one foot and two feet and at maximum eight feet tops. 
The buildings along Chatham Road, um, the storefronts, are at the minimum setback of 10. So we're not just talking about an overwhelming building um, in terms of height, but we're also talking about something that's going to be in our face um, in terms of where it resides on the property line. Um, please vote no on this. I know y you've had a lot of information given to you from, from the attorneys, and um, you you know what the outcome can be. I think a lot of people here have done a lot of reading. There are attorneys in this, in this audience. We're aware that we are at risk, but we're asking you to represent us and vote no. Thank you. I'm Maggie Miggins and I live at 34 South Terrace and I think this is incredible thank you all for showing up I I'm so impressed with this room and I think we have to give a big shout out to the Cosgroves who have been following this for two years I just want to do that I think that's important um, you know I I work and live at 36 Chatham Road that's where I am that's where my office is um, I'm Maggie Megan's group at Keller Williams Realty and it's a great place uh, to work and I love seeing everybody that walks by I can't tell you how many times I've been crossing the street where I've almost been hit people speeding down that road um, I think this building is too big and I think we're trying to put 25 pounds potatoes in a five pound bag that's how I see this and I and I'm sorry for all of you, quite frankly. You're, you've been handed this, and it, as I said, it's been kicked down the road. But I think let's keep kicking it until the, the people that make the numbers for us, that tell us, you know what, Milburn, you've got to give a 1,000 units. or Because all we're hearing are these numbers, these scare tactics, it's ridiculous. Get the number and then figure it out, because we are about 5,000 units here. If you throw another 5,000, that just changes. We are, we are a suburb. We're not a city, we're a suburb. And I think if you add these units slowly, and it's important we have them, it's important we have fair housing, I'm not against that, but I think it's gotta be like adding eggs to a cake batter, you do it one at a time. And I worry about the impact with property values I do, which again, you have nothing to do with, but life changed with salt deductions. It really changed from a real, a real estate perspective, and that's what I do for a living. We'll close 100 houses this year, but it's, we're, we're, we're starting to sense a little bit of pull, pullback and pushback, and I could run numbers for any of you if you wish, um, but I think, no, I don't, I'm not for business, but to, for, to, to be able to show you, like, you know what? The real estate's getting impacted. That is a little, a little heaven over there, and I want, here's why I want you to not vote on it tonight. I've asked, and I don't know if you have the answers to this or not, but I've, I've been trying to get all the old tax maps. I've been trying to get all the old title work and all the title searches that go all the way back to the beginning. I've asked my title company to run it. I'd like to see the land that is the township's portion. Was that ever part of the Arboretum? Did it somehow get carved out? When the township carved out a piece of it to give it to the Summit Medical Group for parking, was that allowed? Is that what Cora Hartshorn would have wanted? I don't know, I don't know, the, and I'm trying to get those answers. And I think it's important that we wait and we get those answers first before we go and vote for this. And if those, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but if I'm right, terrific. And because by the way, if the township has done anything untoward, we have an opportunity of losing that piece of property. It gets reverted back to the county. If we'd done something with the land that could have been part of an arboretum that maybe got carved out. I don't know. I'm just saying, I'm asking you not to vote today so that we can look and make sure that we're covered. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> my name is Ronald Tkach. I'm at uh, 57 Wellington Avenue. I've been in town for 36 years. I've served on the planning board for uh, approximately 10 years, going back ways. Uh, this is much too intense. The density is too high. It should be no more than two stories. I would never allow it uh, when I served on the board, even as its chairman. It's just too much. It's too dense. You've already had a fatality here. And as you've heard time and again from the people in this audience, 
I think uh, you really need to be representing us who voted you in. Okay. Thank you. Shelly Wong, Nati Oakview Terrace. Um, I just want to echo everybody here. Totally agree, especially the professor said about the kids' safety. So I'm also the two kids' mom. So the safety, please concern. It's really, really, really dangerous for the little kids in Glamde. Um And also, I have a call for action petition letter here. And uh, it's uh, my friend and uh, uh, young drafted it. Uh, we already collect uh, more than 103 pe uh, 130 people collection. And uh, here, currently, I have 40 number, and uh, there is another copy, I think another 20. So it means uh, almost uh, 200 people want to let you know, please listen to our voice. We live here. We raise our kids here. We choose here to be our home, and the uh, way elect you to protect our home, our kids. So listen to our voice and urge you to vote no tonight. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ajay Yadav. I live on Minisink Road, Short Hills. I have been living in this town for the last five years. I didn't intend to speak today. But I've also had the opportunity to talk to a lot of residents. What you're hearing from everybody here is that they don't think the downside is that much more worse than the settlement. And they are basically effectively requesting you to vote no. You would have heard that from the hundreds of parents who are in the middle school and who were in the Glenwood school last time. There, there, there are a few other points I want to make. I think some gentlemen spoke about it. The township committee are fiduciaries to the town, to the residents of the town. So there should be no iota of conflict as, as from, from a fiduciary perspective. If anybody had, was involved in the negotiations or in the settlement, should, uh, even, even for a minor bit, then this settlement should be re-looked at. The other thing is, is that I have kids, I have two young boys, they bike around the town, right? It's imp virtually impossible for them to bike around Chatham Road. One of the things I do is tell him, do not go on Hobart, do not go on Chatham, do not definitely go around Woodland Road because of the traffic, there was a fatality. Traffic assessments in the middle of July, in the middle of the summer, are meaningless. They should be done when school's on, during when people and kids are walking. Melbourne schools recently got an award for being one of the top schools to walk and bike and everything else. How is that impacted? The other thing is, how is the traffic assessment in the middle of, summer, middle of the winter when the snow is on both sides of the, of the road and the road narrows? I take that road every time. It's virtually impossible to turn into the high school. It's just uh, insane. So I always take the Woodland Road and basically try to make, make, my, make my way onto Melbourne Avenue. Traffic backs up almost all the way to the Short Hills train station. And lastly, in this environment, we are not just fiduciaries, and you are not just fiduciaries to the residents of this town, you also fiduciaries to the children of this town. I intend to live in this town for the next 30 years. I have a duty to my children that we make sure that there's environmental impacts. Some of the stuff that we used to ignore in the back days are not ignored anymore. I, we didn't see an environmental assessment study, and to the extent it has not been done, it should be done and shared with the town. Thank, Thank you. you. Anybody in the hall want to speak? Oh, someone in the back, okay. Hi. Uh, my name is Steve Masillo. I live on 292 Taylor Road South. I commute to New York and I walk to the train. I'll be walking past that building every morning if it's put up. Uh, the, one, the, one, the other thing I noticed is that there's a tremendous shortage of parking spaces already in Short Hills by the train station. Uh, that property 
should be used for commuter parking lot and nothing else. So I ask you to vote no on this uh, proposal. Thank you. Does anybody out in the hallway want to speak? This hallway? Oh, hi. Good evening. Tom Hildner, 10 Exit of Road. I've lived in town 40 years. As I listen to this, it's very clear to me that uh, many, many people who oppose this don't, are not really convinced that it is in our best interest to enter into the settlement. This is being recommended to us. What have we been told? We've been told the strong remedy that a builder's remedy is. We've been told the powers that they have. We've been told that the courts can rewrite our zoning ordinance, that we can have densities that otherwise would be totally unsuitable put upon us. We've been told in the meeting we had last week and some of the concerns people have, what's the effect on the educational system? We've been told that doesn't matter. That's not an issue here. Traffic, I'm not 100% clear in my own mind, but that someone made a comment, well, then put up another traffic light, put up another sign. So that doesn't seem to matter. Safety, I would think, would be a matter. The issue of suitability has been discussed. What I haven't heard, and with this uh, concern about it, is what are our arguments? What are our strengths? Where does our case lie? We're being said, we're being told that 62 is the number we should accept. We know that they went from 80 plus to 62 for some reason. Uh, they obviously thought that there was a substantial danger they wouldn't get that. They seem to think that 62 is a number. We're accepting that, why? What are, what are the things that we can say? If, we're, if suitability is an issue, what arguments do we have as to suitability? There's been, in my view, listening to this, no convincing uh, presentation, not that you've made a presentation, but I'll refer to last week, as to uh, what our strengths are and what, why uh, necessarily our arguments are vulnerable. And that's kind of an absence of knowledge. So like somebody who's being asked to accept a settlement, why, aren't we get, why don't, can't we get what we want, which is a development that's reasonable, that's of reasonable size, that isn't a danger to the people there, and not a blight on our community, and just another step to change the whole character of the town we live in. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. John Inglesino from the law firm of Inglesino Webster at Al, and I represent the Silverman Group. Uh, first of all, I want to commend the members of the public who came up here not only this evening, but also at the other two meetings that I was at. Uh, you have a very educated and passionate um, citizenry here in Milburn, and that is to be commended. Um, a lot of the comments that I heard, frankly, in the legal process relate mostly to the site plan process, uh, but I did make notes of the comments that were made, again, many of which are really relevant at the site plan part of this process, and we will address them um, then. Um, like your professionals, I also have a fair amount of experience in these matters from a, different, a lot of different perspectives. Uh, I was a councilman and a mayor back in the 90s that negotiated round two. Uh, I was in your shoes with an audience not too dissimilar to this on a project which at the time was... Uh, uh, not supported by the community and 20 years later uh, has been somewhat embraced uh, by the community. Uh, I have represented municipalities and currently do represent municipalities uh, in, these, in these matters. Uh, and I also represent, obviously, developers in these matters as well. A couple of points that I'd like to make. First of all, um, as your professionals have described, we are here uh, by way of a settlement of a builder's remedy lawsuit. Uh, which my cl client, quite frankly, was reluctant to, to file. Uh, the Silverman Group... Everybody, excuse me, you were all given respect. Everyone gets respect at the podium. Put on the timer. The, sil the, sil the Silverman Group uh, assembled these properties and closed on them in 2016. So it is the owner of these sites. It's not a contract purchaser. It is a property owner, like any other member of the community here owns property. So does the Silverman Group. 
We attempted, as, uh, we attempted to have these properties rezoned in 2017. And you may recall, there were a number of hearings. And the proposal at that time was for 82 units. I don't know where numbers came in about 55 or 62 has always been the number. The proposal was 82 units just to set the, the record straight at that time. Now, when that process broke down, my client uh, had to protect its rights and file the builder's remedy lawsuit, which it did. And suffice it to say that your town, based on its history, is vulnerable, uh, in our view, to that, uh, to that suit. Uh, we believe that this site is suitable for the 82 units, although we also believe, frankly, that it's suitable for an excess of 100 units. <laughs> we, I'm going to get there. We believe it is particularly, particularly suitable for 82 units. And we believe that at least that amount would be awarded by the court. We've engaged in mediation under the auspices of the special master, who is appointed by the court and who is a representative of the court. And so the settlement of 62 units was not done in a vacuum. It was done with long, intense negotiations under the supervision of the court-appointed master. And that number that was reached was 62 units. Now, you have to, people have made the comment that it's too dense for the site. Um, frankly, legally, my opinion, people can feel free to disagree, is that uh, the measure of density is really against other transit-oriented developments in similarly situated municipalities along the train line. And when you look at those densities, a few projects come to mind. Westfield, Excuse me. Excuse me. I really have time if you interrupt, please. Westfield, there's a project at 52 units per acre. 53 units per acre are also in Westfield. Morristown, 60.4 units per acre. Cranford, Maplewood, 58 units per acre. So here, this is at 40 units per acre. We don't think that it is too dense. So, I, I ask again for decorum, as you were all respected when you spoke. Uh, Excuse me. Everyone, please take five seconds. And I, I just finish. would like to address one last point, please. if I may. Stop. Five seconds, please. Which was raised as to why my client would accept the 62 units. Okay. First of all, we made a settlement. We made a deal. Time is important to my client, and we'd like to get started, and we would like to settle with the community. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Oh, my God. I excuse me for losing my temper. Everybody has been given equal opportunity to speak at the podium and was not interrupted. Okay, let's move on. Is there anybody else who would like to speak tonight? Sandy, you spoke. I'm sorry, sir, you spoke, please. I spoke briefly, I want to speak again. Look please, at, we have somebody else to speak. Stephanie Nesser, 79 Stony Lane. Um, in response to the Silverman's attorney, and he cited Morristown, he cited Westfield, those are very different towns and different places from Chatham and Woodland. Chatham and Woodland is a small suburban um, neighborhood, thank you, neighborhood. They are not in any way compared to Westfield and Morristown. And yes, Silverman does have the time to do the right thing and consider this community and this neighborhood that they are proposing to put up this monstrosity in comparison to the neighborhood that it is in. Yes. <laughs> Janet Pizar, 186 Main Street in Milburn. I've been sitting here biting my tongue, but I could bite it no longer. I'm not a NIMBY. This is not about not in my backyard because I don't live anywhere near the proposed development on Chatham Road. But I care about the town and I think it will be an eyesore and it will be displaced and it is out of proportion to everything there and I feel for the residents that live in that area. However, 
You owe the people here tonight an explanation. This is not even a controversy because you don't have every other person up here talking and speaking and advocating for this development. It's not controversial. You have an obligation to your constituents, not to the developer. You owe us an, you owe us an explanation. Um, and we, we kind of have a feeling now how this is all going to shake down. So one thing I would like to say in terms of recourse, folks, make this a voting issue. Yes. In two months, you're going, into a, you're going into a voting booth. Make this your voting issue. Would you like to finish your three minutes? Sure, I'll take less than three minutes. So uh, I'm actually a litigator. I'm an attorney, I'm a federal litigator. So. This type of suit's not my, my cup of tea, but as a litigator, I just want to say something. Um, an attorney for Silverman Group portrayed everything like it's a settled issue, like the settlement has been reached. No, the settlement has not been reached, okay? So it's in your hands, and you should do as the township wants. Thank you. Tom Herbertson, 76 Oak Street Terrace. I just have uh, one question. I guess it's, uh, it's more directed to Mr. Buziak. I was at the meeting last Tuesday, and he was talking about uh, interveners. And I, I was just wondering, depending on how this vote goes, I don't know if this will be addressed, but can, can a citizens group like ours hire our own attorney? Because he said, the, you know, that a, a builder can intervene, and uh, the, the um, COA can intervene. Well, can citizens intervene? And that's, that's my question. There's no reason to rush this through. Like, People had said the um, yeah, the Sachs property that was 15 or 20 years. There's no reason to rush this particular uh, project through in, in two and a half years or so. We Thank will you. Address that. Thank you. Public hearing the ordinance. Okay. I move that this public hearing be closed and the ordinance be adopted on final reading. The township clerk be directed to publish the ordinance by title as passed on final reading in accordance with law. Is there a second? Second. Oh, wait. Is, is there a second? Okay. Second. No, we go. Does any member of the township committee wish to be heard in advance of the roll call on this ordinance? And I'll start to the right with start with Sam. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, committee woman Prupus, would you like to make a statement? Nope. Committee woman Levy, would you like to make a statement? No. Committee woman Benjamin. Yes. I believe my constituents are entitled to an explanation of my vote in favor of passing the Chatham Woodland Road ordinance. I understand your unhappiness. Oh, wait. After. After, yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Give me one minute. Yeah, I just wanted to speak here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Continue. I understand your unhappiness, displeasure, sadness, anger, and profound sense of disappointment. However, at this juncture, casting blame and lobbying recriminations does not solve the problem at hand. With respect to this particular development, trying to answer how we got to this position is irrelevant. We must deal with the issue at hand. Milburn Township is now faced with a builder's remedy lawsuit with Silverman Properties where local land use regulations concerning setbacks, height, density no longer apply. Normal development considerations such as traffic, education, infrastructure, environmental, take a back seat to the provisions for low and moderate income housing. The primary issue is whether under the circumstances the township needs to make an admittedly difficult decision to move forward, settle litigation and provide an appropriate number of low and moderate income housing units towards the satisfaction. I'm asking for respect. We have two choices. Accept the mediated agreement between Silverman and Melbourne Township, 
or do not pass the ordinance against the recommendation of our professionals, our special master, the and take our chances with the judge. In the event that the judge renders a decision in favor of Silverman, it could result in a building of either greater height, density, and size, and the, and the township loses its immunity from all future suits. As your representative, I'm not prepared to take that risk. I leave you with this promise. I will vigilantly pursue appropriate surroundings, commence studies immediately to address traffic that will certainly arise from construction and the additional residents, visitors of these mixed-use buildings, ameliorating traffic flow, improving the safety surrounding the Short Hills train station and along Chatham Road to the Glenwood School will receive top priority. I also think we should look at widening sidewalks, improved lighting, additional police presence during the high density periods. Finally, I believe it's an incumbent upon our township committee, our town planner, our planning board to address these mandates surrounding affordable housing because they are here to stay and we must execute the appropriate short and long-term strategies that will satisfy the state affordable housing requirements. Excuse me. Excuse me. Thank you. Okay. First, I'd like to come, I would like to, I would like to speak. I, I want to address that I have no conflict. I want to say that the Township Committee meetings are set in advance for the entire calendar year. There's one change next month due to the Jewish holiday. September is full of back to school nights. There was no, um, we did not pick the library to keep people away. It was the only night our professionals available. And to think otherwise, I, I can't convince you that this was not right. I've also lived in Milburn almost my entire life. <laughs> Be assured that I have read all of your emails from the residents who live near Chatham and Woodland Road and those who may not live near there and have concerns. I understand your concerns about the proposed density, your fears that the character of your neighborhood may change, your concerns, your concerns of traffic and more possible school-aged children. I have personally had many sleepless nights and agonizing days thinking about nothing but this project your concerns, and the difficult decision that looms before us as a township committee. I need to assure you all that everyone at this DS and town hall have worked in good faith with the township's professionals every step of the way for over two years. Two years. This has not just appeared to get the best settlement for the residents in the project area, but for all of Milburn Township as a whole. A decision on 85 Woodland Avenue must take into consideration its potential impact on the entire township of Milburn. It's Woodland Road. Woodland. As my former colleague, Mayor Robert Tillotson, a three-term committee member, once said, Milburn has kicked its affordable housing obligation down the road and the can has stopped. It has indeed stopped and it is before me and this township committee. It has been over 40 years and the courts are now more involved in how every municipality must proceed. As you know, we have heard your pleas when you asked us not to declare this area an area in need of redevelopment, of which it did fit every legal portion. You asked us not to fear a builder's remedy lawsuit, so we moved forward with litigation. As required by Judge Gardner, the township participated in a mediation process. We brought every one of your concerns, questions, and list of requests to the table. I met with several of you. Many of these were indeed incorporated into the final settlement. settlement. Many, of you, as, many of you, as one of you said, are lawyers, and you have researched this in tremendous detail. Your research shows that Milburn Township is obligated by the New Jersey Constitution to provide our fair share of affordable housing in the state and that the builder's remedy is a tool for developers to see that that happens. 
you understand what the township committee and the t is up against. We, as your elected officials, are tasked to make policy by passing ordinances and resolutions. As someone said, we do have a fiduciary responsibility to you all, but to all of the taxpayers in this entire community. We must make truly tough and gut-wrenching decisions like this one tonight. I have spoken to other mayors and sought the opinions of additional professionals. Entering the township into a protracted lawsuit, which could prove extremely expensive, is ill-advised. We, I've spoken to mayors, and I can, okay. We risk losing the immunity of which was extended four times by Judge Gardner to help us get through this mediation. Additionally, we risk a larger final project at this exact location. We will also lose the we will also lose the professional the beneficial protections that have been meticulously fought for for and agreed to and written to a 12-page settlement and zoning ordinance that's before us tonight. I hope you will continue the dialogue. You will, I'm sure, remain involved, whatever process ensues, and keep the lines of communication open with the township and yes, the Silverman Group. We know we will continue to work to find any areas of opportunity that will enhance the project. I was invited to the Moon, the Chinese Moon Gala. There was over 250 people there. My closing remarks were, I hope we will continue to live in harmony and love our neighbors. This is what we are up against. I'm not happy. I hear your pleas. I feel everybody's pain. This is where we are at. I wanted to at first compliment you for all being courteous tonight to all the speakers. And I will now give our professional chance to, um, before we take a vote, if our professionals would like to answer and address any of these concerns. Why was the traffic sitting in July? Yeah, cool. Okay, Mr. Phillips. Yes, I would like you to address. But nobody can address anybody who's speaking. Our professionals have taken meticulous notes. They have heard this. They have received your emails as well. They will respond to what is appropriate. Good evening, uh, Paul Phillips, for the record, um, the township planner. There was one specific question asked of me about the setbacks that I'd like to address. Please. So the question really, I think, was what is meant by the permitted area of encroachment in the setback section of the uh, ordinance? Let me just preface that answer by saying that the setbacks that are in the ordinance uh, basically reflect or mirror the concept plan that was part of the settlement agreement. That's why they're detailed setbacks. Uh, and by way of example, Chatham Road setback was mentioned uh, in the uh, question of the member of the public. Uh, there is a seven foot minimum setback except within the permitted area encroachment where that setback can go down to two feet. And that permitted area encroachment is measured, I think it's 125 feet in length measured from the westerly property boundary. So there's very detailed standards again because the, um, the concept plan that was part of the settlement basically is mirrored in the ordinance per se. Thank you. Thank you. I asked the question, I still don't understand what the Can I cut Deborah? Then I don't remember what your question was. You said you were going to write, write them down. down and the professionals are writing them down. So all it means in its simplest sense is that for that 125 foot area, the minimum setback goes from otherwise seven feet down to two feet. The setback of the building to the property line. Mr. Buzak, is there anything that in your notes that enable you to answer two open-ended questions, please? Uh, the question was raised as to um, the author of the legal background that was on the Township Committee's website um, that was prepared by Mr. Falcon, by me, with the input of Paul Phillips. 
Uh, issues were raised about the environmental concerns. Those environmental concerns uh, will not be ignored. Those environmental concerns will all be addressed uh, during the course of development. If, in fact, there's contamination that is unable to be remediated, there will be no development on that site. Uh, with regard to the uh, numbers, uh, the uh, most attractive number for the uh, township of Milburn prepared by uh, an expert that was retained by uh, over 250 municipalities that pulled their resources together and retained an expert to do the analysis uh, both in the Mercer County suit and statewide uh, is 946 <clears throat> affordable housing units. Uh, the number of affordable housing units based upon the Mercer County decision uh, attributable to uh, Milburn Township is a total of 1,516 units. Uh, the number of units uh, that are being proposed by Fair Share Housing Center, a housing advocacy group that is a participant in all of these uh, cases is 2,641. Uh, there was a comment made that uh, Mr. Banish had no problem with the 12 affordable units and thought that in the end his report would support that. That is correct, but it's not just 12 affordable units. It's 12 <coughs> affordable units out of a 62-unit development. Uh, private developers will not uh, participate and build solely affordable units because they do not have the financial ability to do so. Uh, finally, with regard to the conflicts of interest that's been raised a couple of times, uh, Committee Woman uh, Burstein set forth uh, the facts as soon as she learned uh, that uh, her firm was involved with a building that was owned by uh, Silverman. She approached the township attorney and the decision was made virtually immediately that she needed to recuse herself. Up to that point, there was no uh, knowledge uh, of Ms. Bernstein that uh, her firm was involved with uh, Silverman or property that they owned uh, in any way. With regard, with regard to the members of the township committee, as you all are aware, annually you file a disclosure statement with the local finance board that's available to every member of the public who wants to look at it to see what your interests are, where you derive your income, uh, what properties you own, uh, where your bank accounts are, and so forth. Uh, that's all available and it's all transparent. Uh, and each member of the township committee, uh, as any governing body, uh, has standards under the local government ethics law that they must abide by. And that certainly was one of the reasons why Ms. Burstein uh, was required to recuse herself. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Ed, Ed, <clears throat> I wonder if I could, there's, there's a considerable interest on where things go from here. And I know it has been touched upon in earlier meetings. But I wonder if you could comment just for a minute on the fact that the township now has an action filed, a declaratory judgment action seeking protection of the court and final establishment of the numbers which the uh, township will have to uh, comply with. Uh, I, I can briefly comment on that. There are two lawsuits that, uh, in which the township are involved related to affordable housing. One is this lawsuit that was brought by the developer uh, under the builder's remedy uh, uh, proceeding, uh, but there was a second one that was brought by the township committee, by this township committee, to establish uh, and satisfy its constitutional affordable housing obligation. In conjunction with that lawsuit that was brought three days after the Builder's Remedy lawsuit was filed, we sought and obtained immunity from any further Builder Remedy lawsuits provided that we continued to proceed in good faith to uh, satisfy the constitutional obligations that we have. Now, I've just outlined to you, I've just outlined to you the magnitude of that obligation from the municipal expert at 946 to the housing advocate advocacy uh, number 
of 2,600. Uh, that's what we are faced with and our affordable housing plan that was the subject of a public hearing uh, and was the basis for under which we filed our declaratory judgment action uh, will allow the township to proceed in control of how it satisfies its obligation. But we all must remember that it has an obligation. While we are in control of how we satisfy the obligation, we are not in control of whether there is an obligation. And Mayor, as you pointed out, that obligation is an obligation that's created under our state constitution. It's not created by the legislature. It's created under the state constitution as interpreted by the judiciary. Thank you, Mr. Zeck. Will you please take the roll call, Madam Clerk? Ms. Mr. Levy? Yes. Ms. Lieberberg? Yes. Ms. Purpose? No. Yes. Mayor Thal Eglo? Yes. The ordinance is adopted. Finally, concerning Ordinance 2542-19, we now move on to Resolution 19-222 which is responsive to the Planning Board report. I move that Resolution 19.222 be adopted for the reasons set forth in the resolution as explained earlier by Mr. Buzak. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Gaddy, please take the roll call. Mr. Levy? Yes. Ms. Lieberberg? Yes. Ms. Krupis? No. Mayor Thaw Yes. The resolution is adopted. Well, thank you. Is there any committee member that has an item of old business? Does any committee member have an item of new business? May I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Move to adjourn. May I 